Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, what I would like to do today is to explain you the international financial system. And the international financial system has to do with how money moves around the world and what impact these movements of money, movements of capital across the world have. And since they have a major impact on countries, they can cause big financial problems for countries. Look at Greece, look at the euro crisis in general. I would like to give you a perspective uh, on this international financial system. This is the macro perspective. In a complementary in a complementary segment, I will talk about the micro perspective and there I will talk about how banks behave and how the behavior of banks has affected society and how as society we may want to become more resilient vis-à-vis -vis the financial system. But now the world system, the world financial system. Let me give you a very simple example. And the very simple example is the following. If you look at China and the US, China is an upcoming economy, has been able to uh, develop its manufacturing operations enormously, has become the manufacturing country of the world. What does it mean? It means that China exports a lot and the US, on the other hand, imports a lot. By exporting, China basically creates an enormous pile of money. They get money from exporting goods. The United States buys these goods, so in a sense, the US has a shortage, buying more than it sells. China is selling more than it sells. What does it mean? China ends up with a lot of money, US dollars. And these US dollars basically have to be invested abroad. They have to go back where they came from. They came from the US. So what do you see? China is not just selling goods to the US. You see that China is investing the money that it earns, the US dollars, to a very large extent in the US. So there is a capital flow, and here we are to the financial system. Here we are talking about the financial system. There's a capital flow from China to the US or from China to the rest of the world, which is a reflection of the fact that China has been very successful in selling goods abroad. Now, whenever there are big capital flows in the world, you see that financial institutions become very important. They put themselves in the middle, financial institutions. So capital flows basically create a great importance to financial institutions. Now, what do we know about capital flows in general? We know that capital flows in general always go to countries where we are very enthusiastic about. So what did we see in Spain? The Spanish economy was booming prior to the euro crisis. So Spain had an enormous influx of money from abroad, foreign investors, which basically caused a housing boom in Spain. Similarly in Ireland. Ireland and a lot of foreign investors pushing in capital into Ireland. A boom in Ireland, a housing boom in Ireland, a lot of money in the internal economy, basically pushing up real estate prices, pushing up construction. Uh, Spain had four million South Americans coming in to help in the construction of houses. What does that do? All this activity, it basically means a lot of money is flowing from Spanish financial institutions to project developers to the housing market in Spain. Now that in itself, that in itself would be fine. But what do we see? We see that these foreign investors are overly enthusiastic and the next moment they become more pessimistic. They think that these house prices in Spain or an island are not sustainable and they want their money back. So they, they basically pull out the money out of Spain. What did that mean for Spanish financial institutions? Spanish financial institutions had invested in the housing boom using this money that they got from, that they got from abroad. The housing market suffers house prices start, start falling when the foreigners want their money back. And who ends up with the losses? Spanish financial institutions. And given that these financial institutions are very important, they need to be rescued by the state, by the government, and the country of Spain was in trouble. The same story in Ireland, a lot of money flowing in, an enormous boom in the housing market. Houses prices at some point start falling, foreign investors want their money back, our IRA's financial institutions are in trouble, need to be rescued by the IRA's government. 
And why? Because the financial sector is of critical importance to the economy at large. So we, all, we end up always rescuing financial institutions. Look also at the Netherlands, where we have rescued ABN AMRO, where we have rescued ING, and we have rescued Egon, the three largest financial institutions in the country. So what does this tell us? It tells us that capital flows. In the case of, Sp of Spain and Ireland, caused by over enthusiastic foreign investors, typically always end up in problems. Let me give you one more example. And this is just to make sure that you really understand this whole issue of capital flows, because capital flows is the key macroeconomic issue that we need to resolve in the future and that we have not resolved. The Greek country, so Greece, became part of the Eurozone. Once it became part of the Eurozone, it could basically borrow money at very low rates. Because investors thought Greece is part of the Eurozone and essentially the Eurozone will guarantee Greece. And actually they did. The Eurozone did guarantee Greece. What did it mean? It meant that Greece could suddenly borrow money at very low interest rates. In the period two, 2002, when it joined 2008, 2009, Greece could borrow at German interest rates money. That had never happened before in history because people before lending money to Greece and hoping that Greece would repay the money had always been troublesome in the history of Greece. However, Greece being part of the Eurozone, investors felt confident that they would get the money back. So what did they do? They were willing to lend money. What did it mean for, Gre for, for, for Greece? It meant that for the first time in history, they could borrow money more or less in an unlimited way. And that's what they did. And they didn't have any institution, domestic institution, controlling all this spending of money, which it really meant, because it was not necessary in the past, because Greece could never borrow a lot of money, but only after being part of the Eurozone they could. We didn't check this whole process of capital flows getting into, because all this borrowing by Greece meant a capital flow from investors to Greece. We didn't control that. And what did we end up with in the end? That Greece ended up with debts that it could not repay, and we got the Greek crisis with respect to the Eurozone. So we have explained Spain, Ireland, Greece, the disequilibrium between China and the US with capital flows. Capital flows is the big issue of our time. So what are the measures that we try to take? In the Eurozone, obviously, we try to get some controls on how much each individual country can borrow. We try to get controls on that they don't borrow too much and cause all these capital flows that in the end they cannot repay. But in a sense, Spain and Ireland, the governments of Spain and Ireland were not irresponsible. There were debts by over enthusiastic foreign investors, basically investments by these over enthusiastic foreign investors that led to a housing boom in Spain and Ireland. It was not the government. The government had more or less a balanced budget was much better in terms of its budget than countries like France and Germany even. So we need to control private investors as well. So if internally in countries there is a new boom, we have to find a way to control this boom, which is always in the good time. Booms happen in good times, to control these booms. And now see the big dilemma that governments are in. Can we, in good times, when the housing market is basically rolling along, house prices go up. Who is going to put a stop to this over-enthusiasm about the housing market? Who is going to tell the people in the good times, no, you cannot borrow more. It's irresponsible if you borrow more, it would push up house prices even more. And in the end, this may end in, in tragedy. So we need to control how much you can borrow for your house. You see how difficult this political process is. Capital flows require measures by governments in good periods when there may not be any support in parliament or among the population to control the capital flows. So this is the macro story about the financial sector. And this macro story about the financial sector has to be complemented with a micro story. How do financial institutions behave? How can we make us less dependent on, how can we make ourselves less dependent on financial institutions? That's the item in the complementary, in, uh, in the second part 
of this uh, of this short lecture thank you